The Internet in Cuba stagnated since its introduction in the late 1990s because of lack of funding, tight government restrictions, and the U.S. embargo, especially the Torricelli Act. Starting in 2007 this situation began to slowly improve. In 2015, the Cuban government opened the first public Wi-Fi hotspots in 35 public locations. It also reduced prices and increased speeds for Internet access at state-run cybercafés. As of July 2016 4,334,022 people of the total population were Internet users. By January 2018, there were public hotspots in approximately 500 public locations nationwide providing access in most major cities, and the country relies heavily on public infrastructure whereas home access to the Internet remains largely inaccessible for the general population. As of January 2018 mobile Internet remains inaccessible in the country, but the state plans to start offering it in 2018. Announced on the night of December 4, 2018, the Cuban government said that ETECSA, Cuba's official telecommunications company, would begin to roll out mobile Internet access to all Cubans. The Internet was rolled out between the dates of Thursday December 6, to Sunday December 9 to avoid congestion. ETECSA also announced different Internet packages and their prices, ranging from 600 megabytes for 7 Cuban convertible pesos $7, to 4 gigabytes for 30 Cuban pesos $30. The Internet being provided by ETECSA is 3G Internet. History In September 1996 Cuba's first connection to the Internet, a 64 kilobits per second link to Sprint in the United States, was established. After this initial introduction, the expansion of Internet access in Cuba has stagnated. Despite a lack of consensus on the exact reasons, the following appear to be major factors Lack of funding, owing to the poor state of the Cuban economy after the fall of the Soviet Union and the Cuban government's fear that foreign investment would undermine national sovereignty in other words, foreign investors putting Cuba up for sale. The U.S. embargo, which delayed construction of an undersea cable, and made computers, routers, and other equipment expensive and difficult to obtain. According to Boris Marino Cordovs, Deputy Minister of Informatics and Communications, the Torricelli Act part of the United States embargo against Cuba identified the telecommunications sector as a tool for subversion of the 1959 Cuban Revolution, and the necessary technology has been conditioned by counter-revolutionaries. The Internet is also seen as essential for Cuba's economic development. The political situation in both Cuba and the United States is, however, slowly changing. In 2009, President Obama announced that the United States would allow American companies to provide Internet service to Cuba, and U.S. regulations were modified to encourage communication links with Cuba. The Cuban government rejected the offer, however, preferring to work instead with the Venezuelan government. In 2009 a U.S. company, Telecuba Communications, Inc., was granted a license to install an undersea cable between Key West, Florida and Havana, although political considerations on both sides prevented the venture from moving forward. Topic. Status Cuba's domestic telecommunications infrastructure is limited in scope and is only appropriate for the early days of the Internet. There is virtually no broadband Internet access in Cuba. Cuba's mobile network is limited in its coverage, and uses second generation technology, suited to voice conversations and text messaging, but not Internet applications. Telecommunications between Cuba and the rest of the world is limited to the Intersputnik system and aging telephone lines connecting with the United States. Total bandwidth between Cuba and the global Internet is just 209 megabits per second upstream and 379 downstream. About 30% of the population, 3 million users, 79th in the world, had access to the Internet in 2012. Internet connections are through satellite, leading the cost of accessing the Internet to be high. The average cost of a one-hour cybercafé connection is about 50 cents US for the national network and one dollar US for the international network, while the average monthly salary is just twenty dollars US. Private ownership of a computer or cell phone required a difficult-to-obtain government permit until 2008. Owing to limited bandwidth, authorities give preference to use from locations where Internet access is used on a collective basis, such as in workplaces, schools, and research centers, where many people have access to the same computers or network. A new undersea fiber optic link to Venezuela Alba One, was scheduled for 2011. The fiber optic cable linking Cuba to Jamaica and Venezuela arrived in February 2011. It was expected to provide download speeds up to 3,000 times faster than previously available. 
The fiber optic cable was expected to be in operation by the summer of 2011, but reports in October 2011 stated that it was not yet in place. The government has not commented on the issue, which has led citizens to believe that the project was never completed, owing to corruption in the Cuban government. In May 2012 there were reports that the cable was now operational, but with its use restricted to Cuban and Venezuelan government entities. Internet access by the general public still used the slower and more expensive satellite links until January 2013, when Internet speeds increased. One network link connects to the global Internet and is used by government officials and tourists, while another connection for use by the general public has restricted content. Most access is to a government controlled national intranet and an in country email system. The intranet contains the acquired encyclopedia and websites that are supportive of the government. Such a network is similar to the Kuang Myong used by North Korea, a network Myanmar uses and a network Iran has plans to implement. Starting on 4 June 2013 Cubans can sign up with ETECSA, the state telecom company, for public internet access under the brand Norta at 118 centers across the country. The Juventud Rebelde, an official newspaper, said new areas of the internet would gradually become available. In early 2016, ETECSA began a pilot program for broadband Internet service in Cuban homes, with a view to rolling out broadband Internet services in private residences. And there are approximately 250 Wi-Fi hotspots around the country. In mid-December 2016 Google and the Cuban government signed a deal allowing the Internet giant to provide faster access to its data by installing servers on the island that will store much of the company's most popular content. Storing Google data in Cuba eliminates the long distances that signals must travel from the island through Venezuela to the nearest Google server. As of May 2018, the cost of Internet access is Cook $1 per hour, or Cook $0. 10 for domestic Internet access, which is still high in a country where state salaries average $20 a month. As of December 6, 2018, Cubans can have full mobile Internet access provided by Cuba's telecommunications company, ETECSA. Prices range from 600 megabytes for 7 Cuban convertible pesos $7 to 4 gigabytes for 30 Cuban pesos $30. The Internet being provided by ETECSA is 3G Internet. The rollout of the Internet service took place from Thursday December 6, to Sunday December 9 to avoid congestion. The service being provided by ETECSA is 3G Internet. Topic. Future prospects. Availability and use of the Internet in Cuba is slowly changing. There is a good deal of pent-up demand among the well-educated Cuban population. When buying computers was legalized in 2008, the private ownership of computers in Cuba soared there were 630,000 computers available on the island in 2008, a 23% increase over 2007. China, Cuba's second largest trading partner and the largest importer of Cuban goods, has pledged to provide assistance to Cuba to help its social and economic development. Chinese networking equipment and expertise are world class and China has experience building domestic communication infrastructure in developing nations as Cuba advances its economy into the 21st century informatics will play an increasingly important role Topic <laughs> SNET SNET abbreviated from Street Network, is a Cuban grassroots wireless community network which allows people to play games or pirate movies by using interconnected network of households. Censorship Cuba has been listed as an «Internet enemy» by Reporters Without Borders since the list was created in 2006. The level of Internet filtering in Cuba is not categorized by the OpenIT initiative due to lack of data, the mobile Internet in Cuba being provided by ETECSA, Cuba's telecommunications company, is mostly uncensored. However, a few sites funded by the U.S. government are blocked, including a few sites that are outspoken critics of the Cuban government lobbying for systematic change. <laughs> 